Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. What's the probability you draw a pair of aces from a deck? In this question, I'm going to ask you to calculate it for two different circumstances. We'll simplify things that you have a deck with only four cards. It has the ace of spades, the ace of clubs, the two of spades, and the two of clubs. You shuffle this deck of cards and you draw two cards. What is the probability the two cards you drew are aces under two different circumstances? Circumstance one, you know at least one card is an ace. And circumstance two, you know one card is the ace of spades. Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. I'm first going to present the theoretical calculation, and then I'm going to show how you can numerically estimate the probability in a spreadsheet. So the surprising part about this problem is that the answers are different. When you draw two cards from a deck, there are six equally likely ways you can draw the cards. You can draw the ace of spades with any of the other three cards. You can draw the ace of clubs with the other twos, or you can draw the pair of twos. If you know that you've drawn at least one ace, then you can eliminate the possibility of having drawn the pair of twos. This leaves five equally likely events. In exactly one of these events, you've drawn a pair of aces. So the probability you've drawn a pair of aces, if you know there's at least one ace, is one divided by five. What would happen if you knew you drew the ace of spades? In that case, the ace of spades could be paired with any of the other three cards there are three equally likely events. Exactly one of those has a pair of aces. So in this case, there is a probability of one divided by three. And this is surprising that the detail that you drew the ace of spades actually affects the probability. The conditional probability is affected because your knowledge is different in these two different circumstances. Now, whenever I do a video like this, people always question whether the probability is accurate. So I'm going to show you that this is the correct probability in a numerical estimate in a spreadsheet. It's going to take a lot of time to do it, but it's worth the time to watch the video. Let's set up a spreadsheet so that we can numerically estimate the probabilities. We'll start by writing down the things we want to calculate. In one case, we want to calculate the probability we have both aces if we have at least one ace in the draw. In the other case, we want to calculate the probability we have both aces if we have the ace of spades. As we do our trials, we're going to want to keep track of the number of times the trials meet these conditions. So we have a deck with four cards. We have the ace of spades, the ace of clubs, the two of spades, and the two of clubs. We're going to draw two random cards from this deck. We then check whether the cards meet our conditions. So how are we going to draw two random cards from this deck? It's not as simple as simply generating random numbers because we want to make sure that the two random numbers we generate are not equal to each other. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to be drawing without replacement. Imagine the ace of spades is numbered as one, the ace of clubs number two, two of spades is number three, and two of clubs is number four. So if we can generate two different numbers between one and four, that'll be like picking out those two cards from the deck. In order to do that, I'm going to generate four random numbers between zero and one. These will all be different random numbers, and that's the key. If you look at the first random number we generate, it's going to be the second highest out of these four values. So that's as if we're drawing the second card from this deck. If you look at this random number, it's the highest. So it's as if we drew the ace of spades. So I'm simply gonna convert these numbers, the rank of these numbers, into the different cards. To do that, we'll use the index formula. 
we set up a reference row of our deck of cards. They'll be numbered from one to four. Now I wanna draw the rank of this first random number relative to the four random numbers. So we'll verify this formula works. The random number that we're looking up is going to be the lowest, it's the fourth rank out of these four random numbers. So that would be the two of clubs and we did in fact draw the two of clubs. So I'm going to do the same thing for the second card. We start out with our deck of cards, but now I'm going to draw a different rank, the rank of the second column. So this will ensure that I'm drawing a different card from the deck, but it is also going to be random because it is relative to these random numbers. So now I've drawn two random, number, two random cards from our deck, and now we need to check whether these conditions are met. So there are different ways you can do this. I'm gonna write out formulas in a kind of a long way. So let's check if both of them are aces. Well, there are two ways that that can happen. That can be if the first card is the ace of spades and the other card is the ace of clubs, or it could happen the other way where the first card is the ace of clubs and the second card is equal to the ace of spades. Now, if these conditions are true, I'm going to put a one and otherwise I'll put a zero. I have to make sure I've typed everything carefully and I've put all the parentheses in the proper places. So that looks correct. Now let's check if one of these cards that we drew is the ace of spades. Or sorry, if, the, if one of these cards is an ace. So this can be if the first card is the ace of spades or equal to the ace of clubs, or the second card is equal to the ace of spades or the ace of clubs. Now if this is true, I'll put a one, otherwise I'll put a zero if it's not true. Now I need to check if either card is equal to the ace of spades. Either the first card or the second card. If that's true, I'll put a one, otherwise I'll put a zero. So now it took a lot of work, but we've set up a way that we're drawing two random cards from this deck and we're checking the conditions. Now I'm going to want to paste these formulas down, but before I do that, I want to make sure that the deck of cards doesn't shift because if I don't do that, otherwise these references will all go down one. So I'm going to put dollar signs, which means that the references to these values of the deck of the cards stay the same. So now if I copy this down to the next row, it's as if I've shuffled a deck of cards I've picked up two different random cards from this deck and I'm checking all these conditions. So that's the beauty of doing this in a spreadsheet. Rather than having to physically shuffle a deck, take out two cards and then check the conditions, I can simply paste down these formulas into a new row and I've simulated a new trial. Now in order to get a good estimate of these probabilities, I'm going to want to do this many, many times. So let's say I paste this down for 10,000 trials. So now I've pasted these formulas down and I've done 10,000 shuffles of the deck. So you could never physically do this this quickly. But numerically, I can now figure out the proportion of times our different conditions are met. So the number of times we have both aces will be the sum in this column. The number of times we have at least one ace will be the sum in the next column over. And then the number of times we have the ace of spades will be the sum in the next column over. Uh, another way to explain this is I've set up indicator variables for the different conditions. So now I can calculate the probabilities that we actually want. Let's estimate these. The probability that we have both aces divided by given that we have at least one ace will be this ratio. And now we have the probability 
that we have both aces divided by the probability we have the ace of spades as one of the cards. So we have about 0 .20 and 0 0.34. So these will remind me of the numbers 1 over 5 and 1 over 3. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Tallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.